Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And in this video, we are gonna be going over the top five myths in 2024 for cybersecurity. Let's bust these things open. So for myth number one, you need a degree to get into cyber with no experience. That is a negative and you do not need a degree at all, no matter what age, shape or form you are in your career to get into cyber. Uh, for me, in my opinion, it's just a waste of time. Get actual hands-on skills, practical skills, knowledge, systems, uh, policies, everything, project management, program management, procurement. I would get all those skills, especially soft skills. If you're going, if, if your goal is to be some kind of manager, senior manager, director level, or even C-suite level, those are more critical, uh, in my opinion, than a degree. A degree is at the end of the day is a shiny piece of paper that you earn from showing up, memorizing a bunch of shit and took a test from what you memorized. Uh, a lot of people that I know that have degrees can't even get a job uh, especially nowadays with the way the economy is going. Um, there's no practical skills. The majority of it is pure memorization. Yeah, there are some fields where the, the degree is required. Doctor, lawyer. I mean, lawyer, pretty much you just, be, yeah, that's a whole nother story in itself. But certain things you do need a degree. Cyber is not one of them. Uh, and again, in my opinion, uh, a degree is a waste of time. Uh, and then 90% of the people just go to school, memorize shit, and they get shit-faced. Uh, it's just a big old frat house to party. Um, so I wouldn't waste my time on it. I would get more practical, go for actual certifications that is going to align with what you want in cyber. For me, obviously, offensive security, pen testing, ethical hacking, red teaming, that kind of stuff. Uh, at least, you know, if you're going that route, the route I did. If you're going for SOC, go for some Splunk training, CrowdStrike, Sentinel-1, Darktrace. Um, I mean, if Darktrace even has it, I'll outside of, you know, within your organization. Um, but some of them do, some, mo most of them do, some of them don't. So stuff like that, if you're going for the blue team, um, sock role, uh, analyst, coding, you don't need to be a coder, um, but you do need to learn coding and it's practical, right? It's running, uh, learning scripts, at least at a bare minimum, understanding what the code, e code does. Uh, you know, you don't just want to go in there and run some kind of script out of, no, out of the blue blindfolded. Um, so at least just have a basic understanding. Again, that's actually a practical skill set. Um, you don't need to be a full-on coder, but having a basic understanding, uh, knowledge base, stuff like that, that's going to be key value. Um, you know, going into these roles, uh, especially if it's your first role, uh, that's definitely what I would do. Get on. I tell people, get on Try Hack Me. It's free because cyber isn't for everybody. It's free. You're not gonna. I'm not gonna go recommend and have someone pay fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars for their OSCP. They don't even know what the hell Linux is. Um, so you know, some people get mad because I don't do that route. But I know for a fact, and I'm not gonna shortchange anyone. I don't get any kickbacks from any company. Go to try hack me. Do it. Try it for free. If you like it, pinpoint out what you want to do in cyber. They have a a ton of paths and you know to get into as a beginner. Uh, so that's, that would be my recommendation. And then if you want to keep going and you actually like it, then you could pay for the subscription for try hack me, jump to other, other platforms, other bigger labs that they, you know, that other organizations offer. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on the first one. Do you need a degree for cyber? And the answer is no. Um, number two, AI will replace all cyber jobs. That is not true. Will it happen sooner than later? Yes. As technology creeps up but it will not be in my lifetime. Uh, I mean, actually <laughs> the way it's going, we might even become the AI with Neuralink transplants. Um, people nowadays say they won't get it, but they probably will with all the enhancements. And to be honest with you, shit, I'll jump, I'll be the first one to try it for free. Um, but no, AI will not be taking your jobs. Uh, and you know, just like with the internet, fear of the internet, I'm gonna take everyone's jobs. Don't be afraid of it, embrace it, use it as a tool, let it help you, let it guide you, let it get all the stupid manual time consuming stuff out of the way. Utilize it daily, learn how to utilize it, learn how to use it, learn how to do different uh, skill sets, not just within cyber itself, but you know, writing, learning how to configure it to, to write SOPs to what you want, standardizations, protocols, whatever. 
obviously don't put any of your private or company information in there. Just X, 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 tag X, X company, you know, do stuff like that. Don't put any confidential information in there. But AI will not be replacing anyone's job anytime soon. Um, there are, as far as from, you know, critical cyber, um, critical cyber positions. However, it will make your job easier uh, if you embrace it and don't be negative towards it. Uh, there are some jobs that it will take that it, it will take and make non-existent. A lot of manual writing, a lot of you know uh, admin work. All that stuff's obviously getting phased out. Uh, cashiers, uh, stuff like that. Bank tellers, all that stuff is getting taken over by AI. That's you know it's, it's going to start at the bottom and work its way up, but it won't be in our lifetime anytime soon. Um, again, unless we are part of it and we get the neural link. <laughs> But that's a whole nother conversation for a different day. So AI will not replace all cyber jobs uh, anytime soon. So just, in my opinion, use it, embrace it, learn to love it. Uh, number three, will you make 100K in six months? This one, at least for me, is a gray area. Um, and I say a gray area. Now, here's the kicker where I think most people get scammed. And this is... a uh, I'll put it like this. If you're coming out with no skills at all, trying to get into cyber, let's just say, you know, 99.9% .9 chance you will not get a job paying you over 100K. I don't care what boot camp, what, whose course you bought, what certs you got, uh, you will not make over 100K. Now, can that, ha can that never happen? No. There are people that might get networking, right? And seeing the potential, seeing the person's work ethic, um, knowing that person, building that relationship, it is possible, but it's very, very unlikely. Um, and that's a big, uh, depending on the role, that's going to be a big risk for the company, right? Especially the way the threats are going with cyber nowadays. Uh, the companies aren't really going to take that risk. And most of, the, most of the time too, from what I'm seeing, especially now the way the economy is, you will probably be starting off as a contractor to earn your way up as an FTE. Uh, coming out of college, no experience at all. Now, there, there are some that are looking for entry-level roles. They still want a shit ton of requirements, which sometimes is really unrealistic for an entry-level role. But you also got to understand the critical criticality of cyber these days with all the threats and attacks going on that, you know, companies have to make a pinpoint uh, accurate hire because it's a waste of time, waste of money to let someone go within three to six months and having to start the whole process over again. Um, so will you make hundred K in six months? If you are starting fresh out, fresh off the boat, 99.9. .9, no, you will not. Now where I say I'm in the gray area, I done this on the side and hybrid roles in physical security. So I had some kind of skill set already. Now the kicker is too, I bring in management, senior management experience, project management experience program management experience and a other ton of different experiences working with executives, learning how to talk with uh, executives, the C-suite pretty much on a daily basis, um, pulling in together uh, business continuity crisis management meetings together, informing them. So I had a whole ton of experience that you're not going to get off the, a random person off the street. So my area is why I say it's a gray area. And I think a lot of people don't touch on that. So it's either one end of the spectrum or the other. Um, so now, it, and that being said, will you make 100K? I think it's half and half. No. If you're in that gray area, yes, because you could utilize those project man uh, cyber, a PM, whether it's project management, program management, and cyber, you're making, I mean, if you look on LinkedIn, even at the contract roles, you're looking at $70 to $120 an hour. Um, you know, and then obviously it's going to give or take if you're FTE, they got stocks, RSUs, that whole nine. So, and they got other other uh, kind of benefits as FTE. So you're, you could end up even making more. So utilizing different skills that you have, procurement's another one. You know, a lot of cyber teams don't have PMs, for, whether it's project, program management, procurement, uh, someone that could, could just come in and manage and oversee a certain department. Uh, you know, bringing that skill set, if you have that and you're coming in, uh, especially, especially if you're networking, your networking game is on point, you will definitely get a job in, in less than six months making it over, over 100K. Um, 
and I've seen it in my personal experience. I'm, I'm one of them. So uh, now, again, the kickfall is where people talk about is, you know, where they get scammed. Oh, you take this cert, you take my course on Udemy, my whatever, in, in two, three months, you'll make over 100K with no experience in cyber. That's crock of shit. Uh, so it depends on where you are in your career, what skills you ha have and gained outside of cyber. And then there's a whole other set where you're coming fresh off the boat. Um, you know, it could happen, but you have a better chance of winning the lotto, in my opinion. Um, so that's that. Second, cyber security jobs are in a bad shortage. This is a, a tricky question, I think. And I think a lot of people are starting to take it a different route without looking at the bigger picture. Cybersecurity jobs are in a bad shortage. Now, yes, you got the economy, all that stuff. Remember, when there's layoffs like that, critical roles are not going to get cut, obviously. Cyber's one of them, right? Fortunately enough, we're in this industry that it's really critical. Now, when, again, when there's layoffs like this, and I've been part of many layoffs, especially in the tech industry, uh, this being, oops, where is it at? This being one of them, um, what goes up must come down, right? When, that, when certain things happen like that, they have to do it strategically to trim the fat. I, that's just, it is what it is at the end of the day. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, another thing too, uh, you know, not just that, but when there are times of layoff where they're getting stuff, like let's just say when Google had that, or was it Google? No, Apple had the, uh, we're getting rid of our, 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 our car program. Now other departments could trim the fat, right? People that ain't putting in the work, people that are just doing the minimum to get by. Uh, and that's a whole nother subject in cyber that, that needs to be talked about. But that's where the fat gets trimmed off. So people say, you know, you see one or a couple posts on LinkedIn that are from cyber, but people don't understand and take into context that, you know, they probably weren't performing well or were shit bags. So that, that's another big piece too. And, you know, majority of these high critical roles are not getting cut anytime soon. There was one, I think it was Patreon, that got criticized real bad that cut their whole, I don't know if it was their whole cyber team or their whole um, GSOC or some, uh, one, one, it was one of those two. But they got made out bad on social media and LinkedIn and just in general. Like, why would you do that? So the other thing is too is, Cybersecurity is being more and more of a critical role, meaning all the threats that are happening are just coming in like fire and they're growing day by day. Um, so they want to make the, the best hire possible. So you got to be on your game, um, not just getting, not just being a cert collector, but taking in that knowledge of the certs you're actually going after, making sure they're actually practical for your job. The other thing is too, is meaning a pinpoint higher, they want someone that they're gonna know that's gonna bust their ass, don't have to be handheld, that as soon as on day one, they hit the ground running, right? They're looking to get the best hire because again, it costs a company money to hire someone, let them go three to six, nine months and having to start the whole process over. It's a waste of time, waste of money. Um, again, I've been part of those processes before, not through cyber, but through other, uh, through physical security, workplace services, real estate facilities. So, and it's like that for every department, not just cyber. So, you know, it, it costs the company money and time doing that, having to retrain, having to get everyone up to par, getting your system, admin, all that stuff takes, you know, and then learning the whole protocols. Every company has different ways of doing things. It's not the same. It's not the same when I worked at GoPro from Facebook to Apple, things are different no matter where you go. Even acronyms are different within the same industry. So I don't think they're in a, I think they're in a shortage. However, they're just taking their time and making sure that they got, for the most part at least, they're taking their time making sure they get the right hire in place uh, because there's a lot of people out there. And if you go on LinkedIn, you know, within two hours, even within 15 minutes to two hours, you got over 100 plus on every single cyber job, cyber PM, um, offensive security, ethical hacking, SOC analyst, threat analyst, data analyst for cyber. Like within 15 minutes, these jobs already have over 100 people. And it's not just cyber people applying, it's everyone else that think that they could do the job because the economy is in a bad place. So you gotta remember that too, these things are getting over flooded by not just cyber people, people in general. So people have to go through these and take their time as a recruiter, filter all this shit out, 
the automation can only do so much. And I know this for a fact because I have a lot of recruiter friends still in the tech industry and a couple of them in the oil and gas industry as well. So I know how these things go. People still have to review this shit manually to a point. So yes, cyber is still in a shortage. Um, it's just they want to make sure they're taking their, they have the ability, most of them have the ability to take their time and make sure they get the right hire. Now, there are some that are putting the jobs out there. They're lingering three plus, four plus months, some even longer than that. But those are out there to get these people in and hopefully they're still available. Um, and when they get the green light, they're pulling the trigger. So that's another, you know, that's another thing that happens with that as well. Uh, num the last one, number five, you don't need to be technical. That's a crock of shit to a degree. You have to know what you're doing. You have to understand what you're managing. You have to understand uh, the processes on how these work from a technical standpoint. Um, you know, if you're managing Splunk, you're going to have to know how that works. You're going to have to have an understanding. And I cannot stand when people hire managers that don't know what the fuck they're managing anywhere, not just cyber. So um, you got to have, you know, I'll give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So physical security, they hire these project managers that just do spot and dots. They just put a card reader on a door, a camera there. The physical security, I would look at it from a red team standpoint, right? How the hell would I break into this uh, facility, building? Uh, what, not just from the system standpoint, but guards, um, subtenants, parking lots, etc. right? Parking garages, especially if it's utilized and open to the public for certain hours on the weekends. Um, so I would look at the whole, the whole picture, break it down. They did not like that because they're spending over three plus million on these systems. Linnell, Genetech, uh, Vigilon, Secure, Milestone, whatever. They come in, they don't understand the whole, how the system works, how it's integrated, what the key points are, what the weak points are, pros and cons, um, how they can make it better and efficient, spot, dot, boom, done, put the keys on top of the panel. It's there if, if the integrator needs to come do some repair. That's how they are. They don't understand the systems from an internal or technical standpoint. They don't even know how the goddamn door locks work. Um, so, and again, I'm transitioning that to cyber where how can you manage Splunk or SOAR when you don't even know what an automation runbook does or how it even works or functions. So you, if you're going to be especially a PM in cyber, you have to have a technical knowledge base to understand because you're going to go in blindfolded. And I did that once at, at Facebook. The difference is for me, I did my homework at night every, I mean, I stayed up till like sometimes two in the morning, uh, understanding and learning dev and uh, how to, how to not, you know, how to do dev in a, a PM perspective. Uh, because that was my first time. And the only reason why I got hired for that role was because I had a background in physical security and I understood it. And I have a, uh, what some would say a gift where I could take someone who's really mechanically inclined and I can make them best friends with the engineer because for those that have experience, they butt heads a lot. It's like speaking two different languages. So um, I had to do my homework. And a lot of people that go come into these roles that think they made it in a different area or arena, they don't have that technical knowledge base and they will fail. Now, if you're coming in for a SOC, offensive security, your ass better be technical. Now, again, I'll touch on it. You don't need to be, it when it comes to coding, you don't need to be a full-on coder, but you gotta understand at least at a minimum of what the code does uh, and scripting. That I will leave there, but I would still try to learn as much as you can when you can. And I know it's hard. Uh, you, you can't learn everything at once. You're just gonna burn yourself out uh, I do say I don't believe in burnout, but there's no way you could do 20 different certs and learn four different languages at once. It's just impossible. Um, so I would break it down, learn what, what tool sets you use, uh, what, what's going to benefit your, whether it's your job, your own business, consulting. Say let's, Python is the majority use. Golang, Rust, learn the hell out of that first and then move on to something else if you need to. But at least from there, you'll have a basic understanding uh, of what to do or how to read, at least read the code and write certain scripts. Um, so the other thing about being technical, uh, I know there's a black and white area from technical soft skills. Yes, soft skills to a degree, but don't be a yes man. Um, I, I'm not a yes man. Uh, I got this 
love-hate relationship in physical security facilities where 50% like me, 50% hate me. And not, the ones that hate me, I could give two shits. I could give a fuck. Because I'm going to not blow smoke up your ass. I'm not going to be rude about it. But I'm going to tell you bluntly on how you're fucking up and why this wouldn't work and why this is a piece of shit and why it needs to get changed out. Um, that's pretty much how I am and how I've always been. Um, I got nicknamed the Hank Moody of physical security when I was younger because I did it more in a sarcastic way, which uh, I don't regret because it's made me who I am today. But, you know, there's people that come in with a certain, a certain ego just because they made it in some other world and they're just me messing the whole thing up, not just for you or your team or department, but for the whole organization as a whole. Um, so, you know, and I'm, I might be running off on a tangent as far as the technical piece, because there's a lot of, a lot of PMs that come in that, yeah, they might be a great PM overall, like just the overall PM standpoint, but they don't know shit what they're managing. They don't know how to manage this project. They don't know, you know, building out a five, 500,000 square foot campus is completely different than, than employing, um, Splunk at an enterprise level. There's two different projects, especially when Splunk's going to integrate with different systems and, and different programs, different units, different business partners, different departments, whatever. It's a whole different ballgame. Deploying, uh, getting everything onto Azure or AWS is completely different than uh, managing a whole move for a 500,000 square foot campus globally. It's completely different. Yeah, you could have the overall, some could be communication on point as a PM, whatever but they're completely different. So be, I don't say you gotta be a niche technical expert, but just understand what the hell you're managing as a PM or understand what you're trying to put together from a program standpoint, manager standpoint. And obviously if you're in those technical roles, whether it's a GSOC, analyst, offensive security, you gotta understand, you gotta have those technical skills. There's no, you don't need to be technical. Whoever said that's a crock, that's a crock of shit. Now you need to have soft skills to a point, but don't be a yes man. Call out what you need to do, but do it respectfully. Or call out what's wrong, but do it respectfully. Uh, you know, you got you to gotta have that fine line. You can't be a pushover either, uh, especially in today's world. There's a lot of pushovers. There's all this hypersensitivity shit. Be who you are. Don't wear a mask. You'll get a lot respected for it. Like I said, 50-50 love or hate me. But those 50 that hate me, they'll know I'll get the job done. And I'll get that fucking call to get that job, whether it's a 1099 or a contract. Uh, that's the kind of respect you want. You don't want people to, you don't want to be a people pleaser. So I'm kind of went off there, but that's what I mean. As far as the technical, you need to have a technical basis of what the hell you're doing and what you're managing. If you're going into that manager role, director role, or PM program project manager role. So just take that into uh, consideration. Soft skills. Yes, to a degree. So um, that's the video for today. Uh, let me know what you think. Comment share, subscribe. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, if there's any other myths out there for cybersecurity um, that are big. Um, but at least these are the five that I found that are getting talked about pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis, especially on LinkedIn. So thanks for coming to the channel and watching the video. Have a good one, everyone. See you next time.